In this project, we are going to make a game which counts how many times you press the button in a certain amount of time. Let's get straight into the make code editor. Same as before, we just load up the editor. We're going to start a new project. We're going to call it button count. We first want to do the thing that we always do. We want to show that this is button count game. For the game to run, the micro bit needs to know the situation of the game. It needs to know, has the game started yet? Is it happening now? <laughs> Is it finished? Should I, should I do anything now it's finished? So we need to help the micro bit and understand these things. And to do that, we're going to use a, a logic loop. So I'm going to take out the logic loop and I'm going to put that in the forever section here. And I need to have a way of telling the micro bit, is the game, what, what state is the game in? To do that, I go into variables, make a variable, and I'm going to call it game state. When the micro bit turns on, I just want the computer to understand that the game has not even started yet. And so I set the game state to zero. Now that doesn't make much sense. What does game state of zero actually mean? So to remember this, I'm going to make a comment. A comment is a phrase that we use in programming actually just to mean it's a note that I write in the code, but really the note is for me or it's for anybody else who's reading the code. It, the, the computer will just completely ignore it. For us, I'm going to open up this comment and in this box, I'm going to say records the current game state. And when it's zero, that means not started. When the value inside this game state variable is one, that means game has started. And when the value is two, that means game has finished. Right, I can make this a little bit smaller just to keep it out of the way. Now I can tell the micro bit, well, if the game has not started, what should you do? We do that by going into the logic blocks, taking out this comparison and sticking it in there, I can get my game state variable and say if the game state is equal to zero, in other words, it hasn't started, what should you do? Well, we're just going to make it a little message on the micro bit to help the person who's using the micro bit know what to do. In this case, we'll just say press A. Good, okay, but when you press A, nothing happens. So we need to make something happen when you press A. If we go into the input blocks, we take out on button A press. Then the first thing we need to do is we need to say, this is when the game has started. So we need to change the game state to one. Great. And so now the game state can be one. So what happens if the game state is equal to one? Well, if we go back into this forever loop, uh, we need to have another space. I'm going to press on this plus and I'm going to duplicate this and put this back in here. Now it says if the game state is zero, then it says press A is literally just some advice. If the game state is equal to one, then now we need to check something. Is the game still in progress or has the game finished? But here we have another problem because how do we know if the game has finished? We need to know how much time has passed. And to do that, we need another variable. I'll make a variable called start time. And again, when the person presses button A, it starts the game. It sets this game start state to one, but it will also record the current time. At the moment, it says set the start time to zero, but that's not the current time. On the micro bit, when you power it, it has a clock inside, which is constantly counting from zero when it's powered on. And this will record how much time has passed. So when you press button A, we want to know what that time is. Later on, we can check to see how much time has passed since it began. And so that's what we're recording here, the start 
time, but really it's just like a stopwatch that started when the, the micro bit was plugged in. Okay, and we need for that we need to go to input and then we need to go to more and running time in milliseconds. If you remember from before, 1000 milliseconds is equal to one second because computers work fast. Let's review. When button A was pressed, the game state was changed to one, meaning we've started the game now. Also, at pretty much the same time, the micro bit started, it recorded in its memory what that time was. So now we need to check how much time has passed. To do that, we need another logic loop. So we go back into here, we pull out this logic statement, and in this case, we want to compare when the game started, finished, and whether the, the amount of time has passed. So let's get this statement again. If the time passed is greater than two seconds. Now in milliseconds, we have to multiply the number of seconds by 1000. So two seconds becomes 2000 milliseconds. But how much time has passed? Well, in this case, we need to do a bit of maths. So we go into the maths block and we take out subtraction. I'm gonna put that in the first part of this statement here. We need to check the current time. So the current time on the micro bit is called the running time. If I put that number there and then I subtract and then I subtract the starting time, that's how much time has passed. In other words, maybe I press button A when the micro bit had been on for five seconds, and then maybe this loop is going through after seven seconds. So two seconds have passed, and then that would say, okay, the running time now is seven seconds, and the start time was Five, uh, at five seconds on the, the internal stopwatch. So the difference there would be two seconds. If that difference is bigger than the number that I write in here, then we will do whatever is inside this loop. In this case, what we want to do is if too much time has passed, we want to stop the game. And to stop the game, we need to change the game state. Go back into variables, set game state to two. This will tell the computer that the game is no longer being played because it's no longer one. But right now, nothing is happening. So we need to make something happen. To do that, we get button A pressed. We change the A to B, and then we want to check if the game is in progress. So we need an if statement. If the game state is equal to one, in other words, if the game is being played, when you press button A, it should give you one point. But at the moment, we don't have any way of recording how many points. So we need to make another variable. In this case, let's just call it the count. When the game starts, we need to make sure that this is zero. And so again, when it's button A pressed, we need to set count to zero. When button B is pressed, and the game is being played, we want to increase this number by one. And we can do that by setting count to, do some maths here, get the addition, get the count variable out, setting count to count plus one. Right, and remember, this is the computer way of saying, you take what you had before and you add one to it. At the end of the game, when the time has expired, we want to show how many points the player has. And so we just go show number, because we've been counting in this variable count, we can just put that inside show number count. So let's review now that everything is in place. When the, when the program starts, it will show button count and it will set the game state to zero. And then it will enter this forever loop. As long as this program runs, it will just work through this forever loop and repeat. 
What happens inside this forever loop depends on what the game state is. There are three options. If the game state is equal to zero, then it will just show on the display, press A. If the game has started, first it will check if two seconds has passed. If it has passed, it's gonna change the game state. If it hasn't passed, you'll notice we haven't got anything written down. So nothing will actually happen. In every other situation, else, it will just show the answer because there's actually only one other situation and the only other situation is that the game has been played and is now finished, game state two. And in that case, it will just show the number. So we should be ready. Get the micro bit, get it connected, press download, flashing. Okay. So you can see it's got the text button count, right? That's what we had at the beginning of the code. Then the game state is zero at the moment. So it's just giving us that string, press A. Right, now when I press A, the game should start and I should have two seconds to press button B as many times as I can. I'm just gonna press it two as a test. And then what should happen is after two seconds, the micro bit recognizes the game has finished and then it shows me the number two. So game start, one, two. There you go. Let's just try it again, test it still works. Game start, one, two, three. Okay, you can see that the game works. But how can we make this a little bit more interesting? Well, we can give a little bit of a reward if you play really good. Let's look again at the make code editor. Well, we need another logic loop. Uh, so if we pull out this if statement again, what we're gonna do is we're gonna check what score the player got. And to do that, we need to do uh, a logic comparison. We'll check if count is greater than nine. That's pretty hard. If the count is bigger than nine, that's a good score. So we are going to show a smiley face. It's really, it's a good score. If, and then we're gonna press on this plus. Else if, so if the, if the score is not bigger than nine, then, um, you do the next check. The next check is if your score is bigger than six. In other words, seven, eight, or nine. Then show a kind of a, a neutral face. And in every other situation, in other words, if your score is f six, five, four, three, two, one, or zero, you will get a sad face. Now in each situation, I still wanna show the score, but I don't need to put this show number into the logic statement because already when it gets to the first if, the first thing it's gonna do is show the answer. And then it's gonna, it's gonna look at the answer and determine if I should get a smiley face, a neutral face or a sad face. I'm gonna change something here just to make it quicker because the text scrolls across the screen quite s slowly. I'm gonna call it Q count, quick count. And then instead of saying press A, I'm just gonna delete that and put A. Right, and now my program is ready. Look for the flashing LED. Press download now. It's downloading. Right, Q count. And now it just says A. Right, so now it's ready to play the game. Here we go. So I'm gonna press A, then I'm gonna press B as fast as I can. So here we go. Ah! I got five and you can see five is giving me a sad face. Let's see if I can try it again and get a better score. Oh, I got eight. I got eight, I got eight, which is neutral. This is really hard, so I'm gonna put it down on the table and see if I can try it again as fast as I can. Right, so. I've got nine. 
Got nine. I'm almost there. If I get ten, I get a happy face. Eight. Seven. I seem to be getting worse. I got a two. Oh, well. So, you can try this and you can uh, play with yourselves and uh, other people and see uh, what the highest score that you can get is. And you can change, of course, all of the boundaries. And uh, we've now made a fun little game just using the micro bit and nothing else. In the next episode, we're going to make a love meter. So you'll be able to send a message from one micro bit to another to ask someone if they love you or not, and they will be able to reply.